Hey guys, Sorelga RMD, and today we'll just do a different segment, a different take on radiology and interventional radiology. I'll just discuss a case that I've done in the past with a few images. All right. So here's an image from a case I did. I think I did this case about two years ago. And uh, just to give a little bit of the backstory, um, there's a lot of serendipity in medicine. There's a lot of things that we just sort of end up doing and um, uh, things just sort of work out for the better sometimes, and it's a little strange how it works. So actually, I remember this case being referred. Uh, this patient was referred for GI bleeding, upper GI bleeding. Uh, the cause was unclear. Um, the patient was a little sick, and um, I was working that day. There was myself, and there was actually a locums physician, a uh, very good physician, uh, older, more experienced physician, and um, we were sort of going back and forth on the case. I was sort of kind of uh, wanting to do it. And he was saying potentially to pull back because of how sick the patient was. Um, again, and nothing nothing against the person. Again, I'm just saying, you know, this was what was going on at the time. We were sort of uh, a little bit at odds in terms of I was more thinking to do the case. He was more thinking it's probably not worth being done. And uh, again, probably because I'm younger, probably because I'm a little more excited and interested to do angiography, I pushed to have the case done. So we got the patient stabilized. We got him on the table. Uh, we stuck the right groin. Uh, got a soft or reverse curve catheter up into the celiac artery, and we got these images that you see right here. So we'll talk about the images here. Um, it looks a little confusing initially, but just to kind of make sense of it, it's the celiac artery. Uh, so we're kind of the first uh, big artery that comes off the aorta, you know, as you come from the thorax into the abdomen. Um, it's kind of what you see and what you don't see. What you don't see are the organs that the, these blood vessels are supplying. So out here is actually the liver. If you trace this back, you can see these are the liver arteries. All right, coming back to a common trunk here. Um, the spleen is over here. You can actually see a little bit of the spleen here. And um, this is the vessel coursing out to the spleen. So that's the splenic artery. And a little bit harder to see, but it's right here. This is the left gastric artery. You can actually see these branches radiating out and supplying the stomach. And in fact, if you look back and sort of, uh, you know, come back a little bit and look at this whole image, you see that here's the stomach, right? You can actually make out the outline of the stomach. It's this big bloated uh, structure here. Um, and you can see how these vessels sort of course around the stomach and supply blood to the stomach. So um, the celiac artery, we have the main branches, left gastric, splenic, uh, common hepatic, proper hepatic coming out here. So, um, of course, as an as a interventional radiologist, i um, been doing this for a little while, my eyes go right here. All right, this is an abnormal finding right here. Um, this is the gastroduodenal artery, and as it comes down and around and supplies the uh, inferior aspect of the stomach here, there is this abnormal finding here. There's this um, large contrast collection. You can see that there's a thin vessel going into it, and then it sort of gets focally large right there. So that's basically has to be a pseudoaneurysm. And given the history of GI bleeding, um, this is really suspicious, and this is probably the cause of that bleeding. So this is an unstable lesion. So let's, let's click ahead here. Uh, so what have I done here? So basically I've gone from that celiac artery axis. I have my five French catheter there, the base catheter. Um, through that catheter, I have then threaded a microcatheter. Right? So this is kind of what happens in IR. We set up shop, we get our base catheter, our reverse curve catheter, uh, hook it into the celiac. We're often working in the celiac SMA or IMA. So I've got it hooked in the celiac. And then through that catheter, right, coaxially, uh, through the same axis, like through kind of in the same axis, uh, we thread this thinner microcatheter. And we're basically, I'm trying to catheterize this vessel that goes right up into this uh, pseudoaneurysm. All right, so you can see here I'm getting closer. So now at this point, I have basically threaded that microcatheter right up a little bit past the lesion, and I've deployed a lot of metallic coils here. Um, basically, I've coiled into that uh, lesion and then coiled out of it. So I've kind of coiled all the way past it. And, and really what I've done is I've excluded this, um, this unstable lesion. I've excluded it from the circulation, and that's kind of what you want to do with a, with a pseudoaneurysm. You want to basically take it out of the equation, uh, get rid of it, make it so that arterial blood flow does not see the lesion. 
and that's pretty much what we've been able to do. Um, getting the microcatheter down there, starting to lodge these microcoils. Um, the microcoils are literally uh, basically like wires. Um, we advance them through the, the microcatheter just like a wire, but the difference is we can sort of um, deploy the wire and it coils up into the, into the space. And then we can use another um, device to actually detach those microcoils and leave them there. So we, we do this work here, we get this result. And then finally, we um, do a repeat angiogram. Again, now I am have my base catheter here, I have a microcatheter here, and I'm injecting basically this uh, common hepatic artery. And we're seeing that, you know, thankfully this has worked out well. We have basically completely ex excluded flow to that unstable pseudoaneurysm lesion. And um, this is basically a nice successful result. Um, so again, this is just a, a nice straightforward discussion of a, not, not necessarily a common case, but uh, a case that we see, um, GI bleeding, um, found, you know, diagnosed with angiography, you know, conventional angiography, very old, old technique, but using that able to diagnose a GDA pseudoaneurysm, gastroduodenal artery pseudoaneurysm, and then using microcatheter technology and detachable coil technology, we're able to very safely exclude that lesion from the circulation, uh, decrease this patient's risk of dying from uh, GI bleeding, and uh, I'll do this through a uh, you know five French axis in the groin, a small two millimeter hole in the groin. So um, that's kind of what I got for you guys. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, this is a cool little case discussion and I um, hope you guys liked it. So you can do a lot more of these. Uh, feel free to reach out if there's anything in particular you'd like to see about. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Struggle RMD.